meeting uh, to order for Monday, May 29th. Uh, first item of business, new councillor business. Councillor Parslow. Yes, uh, <coughs> all council members, I believe, received an email concerning the uh, what was described as the deplorable access uh, to the Brookside Cemetery um, uh, that was highlighted by a funeral uh, by the the use of the cemetery. Um, I received some phone calls as well, uh, and uh, I would just like to uh, bring this forward. I would really like us to put a priority on paving and improving the access to the Brookside Cemetery so we don't have a repeat of, of this. That, that same road is also used for access for an, another prop piece of property that has been used uh, um, right now and will be used in the future for um, uh, work related to the oil gas industry. And uh, I think that whole area needs to be uh, uh, looked at. I think it's a shame when people are going through the anguish. You're losing a lost one in this family, and people come to the, to the community, and, and they're greeted with what they were greeted with. So I would like it to be paved and, and dealt with, but also look at the whole area and how it needs to be serviced. So I'd like to uh, possibly uh, this uh, put on um, the staff to report what would it take to, to do. I think there's a fair piece of work to be done. Okay, thank you, Duncan. So through your worship, uh, Sean can talk about what we're what we're doing right now and, and where that fits or whether it fits within the, the five year plan, the existing five year plan and give council some options. So go ahead, Sean. So through your worship, in the immediate um, the staff is having Peter Brothers Construction <coughs> address the bad spots of the road. They'll be starting the end of the week to dig out the uh, areas that have pumped up as a result of, of traffic and wet weather, and they're going to excavate that and regravel as per uh, the subdivision development and servicing bylaw. Um, hopefully, that'll get us through without any major issues in the in the road for the remainder of the season. We also have it slated to be ditched or re-ditched on the north side and ditched on the south side for proper drainage. Um, and of course, staff can uh, put together something. For, for council if they so choose for 2018 in regards to a bigger program and possibly including it for uh, um, upgrades in Nashville. <coughs> Councillor McFadden. Oh, I thought it was a motion. I was going to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we'll bring it forward back under Mayor's business okay. if there's a motion. I just wanted to give Duncan the opportunity to Thank give you. a little bit of an update on it. And yeah, just to add, you know, so, uh, vi former residents of this community came back for the for the funeral and. Um, they, they were just uh, not impressed. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'd like it addressed uh, within the total spectrum of what else needs to be done within the city, but it is a, a very serious concern to me. Sure, I think from that we'll uh, certainly administration of, it was identified through that correspondence, and uh, we'll get the uh, maintenance uh, underway and uh, get it repaired so it is uh, a uh, access acceptable level of uh, repair and then perhaps move it to um, the um, capital program for uh, 2018 and beyond and it's been identified as a as a significant bit of work Brenda yes yeah, for your worship since this item is on the agenda oh, okay business, you bet we can have a yeah motion. you're right Councillor Par uh, Wilbur um, through you to staff and I did hear about an email we got and Councillor Parcel brought it up this access by industry, so is that the normal access for industry to where they're going, or should they be creating their own access to the property they're trying to get to? Duncan? So through your worship, I, I mean, this is a public road. If council wanted to put some designations on road, whether it be <coughs> axle limits or um, weight restrictions, you can do that, and you've done that in some cases throughout the community, but generally it's a, it's a public road at this point for public use. So I think then uh, at this point, if we would, it's not in part of our capital budget for this year in terms of paving it, but perhaps uh, then if we uh, want to identify it, that we um, move it forward for uh, inclusion in the 2018 <coughs> five-year capital plan uh, for consideration for council next year for the major upgrade and paving as part of our uh, capital program for 2018. 
Councillor Schum? Uh, through you to staff is. Can I get um, your microphone? Yeah. Sorry. Um, through you to staff, is that road um, built to withstand heavy loads like the, the industry loads that are traveling on it? I mean, if we go and spend a bunch of money paving it and then it just gets wrecked again, I, I'm just curious to know if, if that road is up to that standard. So through your worship, if we're, if we're talking currently, it's a gravel road and, and as we've seen throughout the rural areas, gravel roads get those restrictions in, in the spring, especially when there's moisture. <coughs> Sean can maybe talk a little more about road construction. To you, Your Worship, uh, we would have to go ensure the integrity of the road prior to asphalt. Uh, it would probably mean that we would actually totally construct uh, a large portion of the road, which means completely excavate and start from scratch. So it would be a bit of work, and uh, but it'll be part of uh, the capital budget discussions like we do on an annual basis for all uh, capital infrastructure programs and would bring back the cost implications for us, inclusion or not. Councillor Parcel? So uh, a couple of other things have been raised here, which uh, one of which I had forgotten about, but this the notion of um, should we look at in, in just total community, um, are there some roads that we should have weight restrictions on? Um, it's just a, a question because one of the issues um, associated with this was the deep rutting of the uh, road and you need a as someone said, a, a, a pickup truck or a four by four to get into the into the cemetery. So, I see as part of the of, of this uh, an issue being raised about weight restrictions on some of our roads. So, I, I, I do we need and also do we need a motion uh, for t staff to to move forward on this? I think we do need a motion to put it on us uh, as a uh, item to be included as a uh, for the two thousand. 18 capital budget uh, discussion. All right, I'd like to, to move that the access to the Brookside Cemetery, uh, the issue of access, be brought forward into the 2018 capital budget, and that a study be undertaken about weight restrictions on city roads uh, at break up. Okay, thank you. Second, Councillor McFadden. Discussion? Councillor Roger? I think I better step out here because um, of the, I own the land between Brookside and Lawrence's. So there might be a perception that I want to get that road okay. paved. I don't know. Further discussion? <coughs> Any other comments, questions? You ready for the question? All in favor? Opposed? Kerry, thank you. I have one uh, yep, item. Go ahead. I had the pleasure of attending the cake cutting on Friday for the um, Acknowledgement of the millionth customer um, passing through the to the Ken Barrett Aquatic Centre. Um, staff put on a, a nice function. They had an evening thing as well, and the Barrett family were in attendance and much appreciated what was being done. So we look forward to the second million. To, Tempted to have a bet on that, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> a discussion about it, I think it will happen in a short, a slightly shorter yeah. time period. Yeah. But I think that's a great accomplishment for the pool, the staff, who are just excellent. The facility is excellent, probably the best in the Peace region, for sure. Maybe even Rosella Borick, she's been to other places, thinks it might be the best in the north. But anyway, she may well be right. But anyway, much Borick family are much appreciative of it of the uh, continuing maintenance and operation of the swimming pool. Thank you. Thank you for her attending. Uh, next item, Councillor Rogers, item 2.2. Yeah, um, the Tourism Advisory Committee, um, they're just wondering, or I'm wondering, um, how Council wants that committee to move forward in the future. Um, Council had uh, adopted the recommendation from the committee at our last meeting regarding tourism and um, the terms of reference that we currently have were to um, come up with a, a plan for the future of Dawson Creek, which the, that recommendation Council had approved at our last meeting. But uh, regarding that committee, um, uh, what's it going to look like now? I'm just asking Council, like, what, it, what does council want that 
Tourism Advisory Committee to look like now um, regarding the uh, terms of reference, or do we, or do we even carry on with the Tourism Advisory Committee? So I just asking everybody here sure. what their thoughts are. Great, thank you, Councillor Schumann. Um, so I was thinking about this, and I was thinking that so there the one major task which was to um, provide us recommendations regarding the exit strategy from Northern BC Tourism Association um, and that's completed but I was thinking um, once we get uh, put out the RFP or RFQ whatever we're putting out um, for that not-for-profit or whoever organization to take over the tourism um, I was thinking that being that this committee has worked um, and has so much information and has worked so hard on this matter that they might be able to uh, provide some sort of, um, I don't know, advice, being they're an advisory committee, to the organization that's going to take it over? I, I don't know. Yeah, that was, that was part of the uh, original motion that we made last last week or a couple weeks ago so that, then that one of the uh, committee members would oh yeah. work with the through the RFP process but but I was thinking more along the lines of that committee might have some input of what you know they want for the future f for the future working they might in conjunction they might use that advisory committee as as a a sounding board or uh, they might get ideas or I, I don't know I was just thinking that they might be helpful to the new group that's taking over I mean I could be wrong maybe they don't have we do have a tourism uh, like the strategic plan yeah. that we went through last year um, and I don't know if you that I guess would all roll into it as well what do they think <coughs> what, what does the committee think um, their thoughts were um, that they would like to stay involved. Um, so that was, I'm not speaking for the whole group, um, but uh, there was a majority of the group, I'd say, that would, that still said they indicated that they want to carry on and meet maybe once a month or, or quarterly or something like that. So that would be, have to be sorted out. Did they meet quarterly? Did they meet once a month? Um, and just to make sure that everything's going according to the community plan so I, for me I certainly see value in having that uh, kind of com committee representation that uh, a resource available to uh, the tourism uh, functions uh, for the community there's some there's some other pieces in there to me that are I think we've really um, put some focus on and we're hoping to put some focus on and that's uh, the whole event and sport tourism component and I really like the idea of building uh, that uh, st strategic objective uh, and using the committee as a as a resource f to help us with that as well so I think there's some real value in having them available not only to help that new um, organization that's delivering tourism on behalf of the traditional tourism functions but some of them other components so if the committee is still interested in it I think we could maybe could um, restructure some of those terms of reference if the committee has a will and um, put some uh, sound solid direction in some of those components that now we can move it forward yeah we do have a meeting um, we do have a meeting coming up um, and I just wonder if maybe that if the committee got together and then had a discussion amongst the committee on what they would like to see it looking like in the future and then I could report back to council on that and then if council in the meantime has anything that they would like to direct the committee to do as well we sure. could we could discuss that awesome I, I think it's a great idea well, good okay. so you'll bring that back then and have the conversation I'll, and yeah, bring I'll it back. have that conversation then I'll bring it back and good. then we'll talk about quarterly meetings or whatever sure um, I do have one other yeah, thing. go ahead um, the community cleanup. Um, I noticed that uh, a lot of the groups, um, because of the rain and everything else, um, you know, kudos to staff for reorganizing and coordinating different groups to go out on different days. I'm 
pretty sure that was a logistical nightmare. But most of the uh, most of the town seems to be cleaned up right now. The total on the bags gathered so far was 213 bags of garbage. Um, 56 areas have been cleaned, and four areas or uh, four routes are just left to be done and picked up. But that was because there was water still in the ditches and stuff like that. So. So I, I do like to thank uh, all of the uh, partners in this, the citizens of Dawson Creek for helping clean up the city and for staff to organize this. And I think it's it's noticeable that it's all going around. Good job, thank you. Councillor Schumann. Yeah, I just have a question for Councillor Rogers. Um, the swap and shop was canceled um, due to the rain. Do, uh, do you know if there's any uh, plans to hold it at another date. I know that it's a, a good event and yeah. I'm not hundred percent sure of the date or what they were doing with that, but Shantae is up in the cow, so we could probably yeah. ask her then. Thank you. Any other councillor business? Councillor Wilbur? Um yeah, so on Friday I had the privilege of addressing the graduates at UNBC and so I just want to say uh, extend a further congratulations to all of our students from North and South Peace. Um, British Columbia that were a part of that ceremony on Friday so it was great to see and it's so awesome to have a university in northern BC and to see um, also the feedback from the graduates out of how many plan on staying in the north so it is true if we teach them and raise them in the north likelihood is they'll stay in the north so that was great to see um, just some quick other things we are I have registered uh, for Terry Fox run so I will be doing that again this year and we have a team of 12 volunteers so it's getting bigger and and better so we'll do that one more round and see <laughs> if I exhaust myself or not but I, I'm happy to host um, uh, Councillor Parzo had touch base on the one millionth customer and I really I just want to say congratulations to Michaela Love who is the winner. So Michaela is not a girl guide anymore, she's a pathfinder, but she's the girl that comes and sells the cookies. But she's also on the SEAL swim team and she mows lawns, babysits, collects bottles, whatever it takes to pay her fees to do all these things. So I was really happy to see her win that pass and I know she'll make good use of it and uh, it went to someone very yeah. well deserving. So I just want to say congratulations, Michaela. Thanks, uh, absolutely a great uh, uh, indication and a, a great young uh, girl. And she makes, um, she makes money selling Girl Guides cookies. <laughs> Look at she me. Does. Yeah. And she does, uh, yeah. takes my bottle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any other new councillor business? Actually, yeah, I should come back to the, uh, some people have been getting hold of me about the Rotary Lake and Splash Park. Um, I'm just looking at the email exchanges that are going on between Northern Health and uh, Dale Campbell, president of the Mile Zero Park Society. Um, I would uh, suggest that I, I'm very confident that the Splash Park will be opening soon. Okay. Um, and I think uh, things are moving forward. So I expect to see Rotary Lake open sometime in the summer. That's just reading between the lines. So yeah. good. That's people are asking. Yeah. Thank you. Any other new councillor business? So we'll move on to uh, item three minutes, the minutes of our public hearing of council for May 8, 2017 for the business license regulation amendment bylaw. Councillor Wilbur or Schumann, Councillor McFadden. Any errors or omissions, Councillor Wilbur? Um, item 9.2, I actually voted against the motion, was not in favor, so we just adjust that. We'll make the correction, thank, thank you. you. Any other errors or omissions? All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. 3.2, we have the minutes of our public hearing of Council, um, the temporary use permit on Alaska Avenue. Councillor uh, Wilbur, Councillor Parslow. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. 3-3, we have the minutes of our regular meeting of Council of May 8th for adoption. Councillor Schumann, seconded Councillor Parslow. Any errors or omission? All those in favor? Opposed? It's carried, thank you. And 3.4, we have the minutes of our special meeting of Council of May 10th for adoption. Councillor McFadden, Councillor Wilbur. Any errors or omission? All those in favor? Opposed? Carried, thank you. Shay, which, which one did you? It was the one on tourism. It was the regular council it was meeting. Regular. It was in oh, mayor's okay. business. So it wasn't that 3.1? No. <laughs> any business arising out of the minutes? Of any of the minutes? 
correspondence 5.1, we have a letter from Anton Schindler, manager band uh, member for Collision Course, request for a one day use uh, of the Ken Park Bowl in July. Councillor Schumann, Councillor Rogers. I Discussion. So you're moving, I'm sorry, no, so you're moving? No, I, I'm talking. Okay, so, okay, so <laughs> I want to move. I'm looking for a motion. Councillor McFadden, seconded. Councillor, if you what put your hand up, you're moving. What is the motion, Councilor, though? <laughs> the mo to approve their advance or to approve the use of the park for one day. Co uh, Councillor Rogers, I think discussion. That, I think that it's great. If somebody goes in there and does that. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> Councillor Schumann. <laughs> if you put your hand up, you're moving the motion. <laughs> it's correspondence. All right. I get to decide what. The now, you're gonna, is. now you're gonna. Now you're gonna. <laughs> and I was going to decide something different. All right. So you're now time okay, to discuss. Okay, so uh, discussion. <laughs> I, um, you stay with me. I'm moving. I'm just curious, <laughs> I'm just curious if Anton is involved with um, Jeremy, Jeremy at all, with the, with the event that Jeremy's putting on. Like, I think uh, like it's great that Anton wants to use the, the park and have his own thing, but... It would be great if we could connect him with Jeremy and have his band participate in the the big full day thing. During, well, I, so it is in July and it is happening. Yeah, so. I, yeah, I, I don't. I, we don't have the answer to that. Administration, Duncan. So through your worship, no. We we just received this letter. We've had little little correspondence with Anton. Um, sounds like it's something that his father did and he thinks would be interesting to do and and really started as kind of a jamming in the park and having a little bit of fun and um, that was kind of the approach they took. And we really want to make sure that we monitor, right? There's aspects to it in terms of as we have with Jeremy and the, and the music festival and so if this is an opportunity to make better use and make some additional use of the park, uh, good. <coughs> Councillor Schumann? Yeah, I just um, want to make sure that some parameters are put in place around, you know, leave it as you found it and provide garbage and recycle bins, et cetera, et cetera. Administration will work with yeah. them on that. Any further discussion? Councillor Wilbur? Um, Councillor Schumann kind of touched on it, but my thought was, yeah, kind of some of the perimeters that we've put around the event um, at the car show so that yeah. the, the yeah. playing field is fair, but I like the idea of having another free event for families to attend during the summer. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Item 5.2, we have a letter from Kit Fast, <laughs> president of the Kiwanis Performing Arts Society, requesting a change of summer hours of the operation at the Calvin Kirk Center. <laughs> Councillor Parslow. I would uh, make a motion to approve the request as presented. Thank you. Second to Councillor Schumann. Discussion? Councillor McFadden. I'm just wondering why they're coming to us to ask. They, uh, it's part of our they have a contract <coughs> to offer. Uh, I think originally under the uh, terms of uh, the agreement that the hours of operation were uh, set by council and so this is a change to those expectations. Duncan? Yeah, so through your worship, when the agreement was originally formed, council uh, wanted an emphasis on that facility being open for public washrooms. That was a need that was identified in the downtown core. And one means to achieve that was by putting these uh, hours of operation in the agreement and including them. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Councillor Rogers? I just wondered, like, is there going to be a cost to the operator of the center for extending hours and stuff like that? No, we're, we're, we're reducing Sundays. So he's, it's a, a cost saving initiative for them. It's, oh. in, the it's, it's in the report. Yeah. <laughs> Reduce, just reduces some of the costs for them. And low, uh, low usage in the summer, so an opportunity to make it more efficient for them. Councillor Wilbur, you had a I question? I was just going to okay. say that those uh, cost savings were actually underneath the closing on Sunday and adjusting daily hours and yeah. then shows Good. the... All those, uh, yeah. are you ready for the question? Please. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. 5.3, we have a letter from Alana Wilford, chairperson of the Grace, Grace Lutheran Church, requesting a letter of support for an NDIT. Councillor Rogers? Yeah, um, I'm going to say let's receive this for information because it, uh, that project, um, I found out on late Friday that it uh, does not qualify. So the best thing to do is just receive it for information. Okay. They don't need Seconded, Councillor McFadden. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. 5 4, we have a letter from Marla Reed, Executive Director, regarding the Dawson Creek Society for Community Living request for uh, the city to install a donated change room lift at the Ken Bork Aquatic Center. Councillor Schumann. 
So I would really like to um, move that we have this installed, but I would like to hear from staff about uh, whether or not that's um, prohibitive or... Okay, Duncan? So through your worship, um, there is a cost for the installation. However, on Friday, uh, we were um, we were presented with a possible donation to cover this cost. So we're just working through that. If council wants to, to direct that back to staff, we can see if that will be able to come together and we can uh, get that done through the donation. So if we make the motion that we're going to approve the installation of the lift and uh, staff will explore a fundraising opportunities for to cover that. Yeah. So, so move. Move. Second. Seconded. Discussion, <coughs> Councillor Rogers. I just, I'm just looking at the specifications for it, et cetera, and it looks to me like it's, it's a residential type lift, and it's not a commercial one. Uh, they'll uh, make sure. They I guess they'll it. be looking at all that. They'll okay. make sure it works. So. Thank you. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Uh, five five. We have a letter from Stu and Mark Flint from the South Peace Historical Society. Request for a resolution to support an NDIT grant application for the Harper Store and Loisel Blacksmith Shop restoration what project. What do you know about this? Councillor Rogers. <laughs> this is a good one. I move that we support it. Oh, yeah. Second to <laughs> Councillor Schumann. <laughs> Discussion. They're all good ones. All in favor? <laughs> Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Uh, 5.6, we have a letter from Donna Kane, Executive Director from the Peace Liard Regional Arts Council regarding the tr Trencher Public Art Sculpture location. Councillor Parzlon. I move that uh, we uh, acknowledge the receipt of this and uh, a pleasure that some happy resolution has come about <laughs> between the Historical Society and other interested parties. Thank you. Second to Councillor Schumann. Discussion? All those in favour? Opposed? Carry. Thank Just you. on, on yep, this, uh, that we, I hope Council's got this flagged uh, in their calendars for the uh, unveiling and the post-celebration at the Roller Pub. I believe you were all notified about that. Yeah. Can we just make sure of those dates as well for administration to get that to Council and Mayor for uh, so that we're aware? Calendar. Okay, good. 5.7, a uh, letter from Kit Fast, curator from the Das Creek Art Gallery regarding the Trencher Public Art Sculpture location. Councillor Schumann? For information. Council seconded. Councillor Wilbur, discussion? Roger, Councillor Rogers? Just one thing. The, they were talking about the classroom and extending the classroom. I think it was like the first year that I was here. They were ex expanding the classrooms and stuff like that. Does this, and then I had heard about the uh, amount of people that they have that utilize the uh, O'Brien School. And is this not going to hinder their expansion that they had talked about a couple of years ago by placing the trencher in that same location? So we have the letters from both that saying they're yeah. good, so. I just wondered what happened to the expansion plans. Well, the, it was well, mentioned in there also. Councillor Parcel? The expansion plans will, uh, are alive, but uh, it will take uh, many, many years, I think, uh, for it to, uh, to have sufficient funds to even think about it. So uh, if it comes about, uh, as the correspondent said, it, this trencher will be is movable and uh, so let's wait and see if it happens. I hope it does happen, but yeah. I can't see it happening for quite a few years. Thank you. All in favor? Opposed? Carry. 5.8. Uh, <clears throat> we have an email from Pauline Castleman and Christine White uh, from the Art Gallery request for a resolution to support an NDI grant application for their multicultural fusion festival at the Pioneer Village. Councilor Wilbur? Seconded? Yeah. Councilor Rogers, discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Here. Can I just make a, a comment? Sure, go ahead. You know, I've been on the council, this is my second term. The culture seems to be shifting, thanks to Mark Rogers for his work, that the community is getting into the fact that there's a pot of money there to be applied for. And it's, it's, uh, it's great that, we, that this has happened, but I think it's all due to Mark's work. Well, I'm not giving him all the credit. Okay. <laughs> You've supported him. <laughs> but even at the regional district, there were several yeah. letters yeah. Uh, looking for letters yeah. of support for NDI grants. So. <laughs> the passion of the community in arts and culture 
um, and now having the ability to access some funding to be able to pull off and execute on some ideas and initiatives is so good. And so to me, I think it's absolutely uh, great work on behalf of Council Rogers and representing us in the region on NDIT, as well as, as I say, the passion in the community for folks uh, for the arts and culture has been uh, very, very strong. And with that, we're at 9 o'clock and we're going to move on to our delegations. Our first delegation, 6.1, we have Colleen Burke from the Dawson Creek Society for Community Living, Step Up and Ride, Joyce Lee, Tourism Dawson Creek, and the city staff in attendance regarding a proclamation of public Proclamation of Access Awareness Day. Oh, yes. Wow. We're away. We're away from you. What's that? We're away for a few things. I'm always away. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. What's going on over here? We're getting our <laughs> delegation up. Thank you, Good morning. I need one of those with a golf club. Good morning. <laughs> Does that make you hungry? She's packing a big hot dog. Present from the heart. <laughs> Come over here. <laughs> I know you say that word on occasion. <laughs> I don't actually. I use fav twari, which is French. But Thanks for coming. It's Colleen. Colleen. I'm the mayor. Nice to meet you. Oh. Hello, yeah, how are you? So, what's your name? Tell me your name. Diane McKillis. Diane, nice to see you. Diane. Diane. Is this to you, youngster? Oh, sorry. Is this to you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Today, it's my pleasure to read uh, the proclamation. Whereas accessibility and inclusion is essential for ensuring that all community members have equity and opportunities and the ability to fully participate in community life. And whereas accessibility affects all aspects of community life, physical, social, and economic, including employment, transportation, recreation, housing, and other opportunities. And whereas we all have a role to play in ensuring that our communities are ex as accessible and, in and inclusive as possible. Now therefore, I do hereby proclaim Saturday, June 3rd, 2017, as a day for individual and group action to promote positive ways of working together to create an accessible and inclusive community for all our citizens. Yay! Yay. <laughs> That's a great Thank proclamation. Sure yes. Thank you very that. much. You gotta hang it down. <laughs> 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 no, I think back there she's. <laughs> you guys gotta hold up that big hot dog too, though. Yeah. <laughs> there. I'm not so sure I want to hold so the big hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> so um, now I'll tell you guys a little bit about why we have the giant hot dog sign. On June 1st, which is this Thursday, from 11:30 to 1:30, there's going to be a free barbecue um, at the NAR Park. So. I don't want to miss anybody. Um, the Dawson Creek Society for Community Living in partnership with Spark BC, City of Dawson Creek, Sustainable Dawson Creek, and Tourism Dawson Creek. <laughs> we're, all, we're all coming together to put on the barbecue um, and it's totally free. There's going to be hamburgers and hot dogs and there also is going to be a 50-50 draw. Um, that all the, the, you could win up to $10,000 and that will go to benefit the Dawson Creek Society for Community Living programming. And also, I just found out that Spark BC is going to be having a survey um, available there where you could win a dinner for two at your choice of a restaurant. Oh, a, din a dinner for four. And the prize was? $250. $250. dollars So you might get a free Gosh. barbecue, you could win $10,000, and also another free dinner. So <laughs> come on. <laughs> Even if it's raining, we should come. 50-50 tickets? Yeah, that one. Are you going to be there selling them? <laughs> yep. Okay, well, we'll see you guys all there. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for coming in this morning. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Great job. Very cool. It's very cool. Yeah. I love reading proclamations. Okay, My favorite part. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your morning. Have a good day. And next up, we have uh, two separate um, proclamations, but we're going to do them uh, together. We have Austin Weaver from uh, Tourism Dawson Creek, 
Joyce Lee and April Moy in attendance, and we're going to read the Tourism Week proclamation, as well as be a tourist in your own town month proclamation. Yeah, go right ahead. Pile away. <laughs> Just pile it on her. Which one do you want? Just pile it on her. me. Oh, I get a new t-shirt. Yeah. Which one do you want first? You care? Let's do it. I want the red one. Proclamation, uh, the first one we're going to do is Tourism Week in Dawson Creek. Well, come on up for it. Come on up. <laughs> he scared you to the hug him. <laughs> nice tie. Whereas, whereas the tourism industry within the province of BC is a major contributor to our local economy, and whereas it is deemed important to recognize the value of pro the province's tourism industry, thus encouraging residents to visit, enjoy, and be aware of the value of tourism resources in our city. And whereas the involvement and recognition of the value of the tourism will lead to a better understanding and enjoyment of tourism within our community, now therefore I do hereby proclaim the week of May 28, 2017 to June 3rd, 2017 as Tourism Week in Dawson Creek. Because the second one I'm going to read at the same time is be a tourist in your own town month. And uh, whereas the tourism industry within Dawson Creek is a major contributor to our local economy, and whereas it is deemed desirable to designate be a tourist in your own town month to raise the awareness of the unparalleled and uncommon attractions within Dawson Creek, thus encouraging residents to visit and become more aware of the value of tourism resources. And whereas the enlightened awareness will lead to a better understanding of the value of tourism within our community, now therefore I do hereby proclaim the month of June 2017 as be a tourist in your own town month in Dawson Creek. Go to the museum. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming in this morning. April, good to see you. Chris, thank you. Austin, thank you. Thank you. The floor is yours, you guys. Well, I have come with gifts. Oh, yay! Austin's going to hand out some gifts. Starting with you, Mr. Mayor. Joyce, yes? Emily is convinced that the museum is haunted. Is there a real story about that, or is it just Emily? That is a great story. Is there a great story? So it is haunted? I'm not sure. <laughs> if you're a tourist in your own town, you can go find out. No, I'm, I'm scared. I'm, I'm, um, Austin's passing out packages, and I want to talk about these in layers. So the first thing on, on your package is an invitation to our Be a Tourist in Your Own Town Counselor to Counselor Day. Oh, okay. We've had this in the past many days, and this year we're uh, really excited to change it up a little bit. So instead of signing up, we're just hoping that you come at a time of your convenience on that day. Oh, come for that. This is the best time of the year for tourism. And then the second thing I want to talk to you about is, um, I'm just going to go, oh, our mayor has this poster. So this is a scavenger hunt that we've put together, that our staff has put together, and it's going to run for the whole month of June. So what you do is you come into the visitor center, and you pick up a card, and then you're going to go around town. There's four locations around town that you take a selfie in front of, and then you bring your camera with your selfies back into the visitor center, show us to prove that you have taken a selfie at these locations, and you'll enter the, a, a draw for a grand prize, which is to be determined. So we're hoping that everybody comes in. And I know if you've got company coming in, you know, in, um, in June, make sure you brought, brought them into the visitor center, and we'll get you set up with, uh, with the challenge. Very cool. Nice. As well as be a tourist in your own town month, we're gathering all the information, everything that anybody needs, because we're celebrating the uh, um, 75th anniversary of the Alaska Highway this year. So we, every month, put out, uh, we call it our flat sheet of activities. And this, uh, this uh, flat sheet goes out, I think, to like 1,200 um, um, 12, 12 to 1,500 copies a month. Yeah, we, we take them out to our restaurants and our, our hotels, and they're, they're uh, distributed all throughout town, and it lists all the activities going on in the month. We've also included on the back side a roundup of all the 75th anniversary activities. So this is going to be updated all throughout the summer. So this is to celebrate the Alaska Highway. In um, 
because we are celebrating the Alaska Highway anniversary this year, we're inviting all the students of the, all the public schools to come down to the Alaska Highway House for a special tour, a little program that we've put together to really connect with our history here in Dawson Creek and, the, and, and how the Alaska Highway changed Dawson Creek forever. So we're hoping that uh, we, we get lots of tours for the schools. And we're also saying to you, if you want to um, come into the Alaska Highway, take a little roam, roam around and we'll show you what we've got going on down there. And we have, can I open this up? <laughs> we have um, some beautiful new clothing <coughs> to celebrate the Alaska Highway. Um, the, uh, this logo is special for just this year, so these are gonna be real collector's items. We have one for everyone on council. Hopefully it's just the perfect size. We've got some. So this one is Thank for you, you, Mr. Mayor. Um, and I also wanna do an ask. On our, our um, tourism, our counselor to counselor day at the visitor center, our hope is to have, we've got this wonderful little mobile visitor center, and we wanna park it on the lawn in front of the, the NAR park in front of, front of the visitor center just for the day. So we're hoping that council will consider allowing us to do that for just this one day. Yeah. And I think that's, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> hey. So it's going to be a busy month. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. I just want to thank you guys so much. It's, uh, as always, it's always uh, good to have uh, you guys uh, in uh, council to uh, do this. It's also kind of a sad day in one respect because we're losing Austin. Austin has, uh, this will be his last uh, visit to our uh, city council. He's uh, uh, transferred uh, away to uh, the south. And uh, so obviously the uh, connections that we have with uh, folks in our community when they come to uh, live and work and make this their home uh, and you become part of our family uh, when you do that. And so, uh, and I always say this, we raise our kids to leave home. And so you, uh, when, they, when they make that transition, and wait, when they make that move, we obviously want to thank them for all the time they uh, were here and uh, the great job they did in promoting our community and our city. And we sincerely appreciate that. And uh, we want to wish you uh, all the very best in uh, the new endeavors, uh, wherever they take you to. Uh, but we do sincerely appreciate all the effort that you've put into making Dawson Creek your home. And uh, so we got a couple of small gifts of uh, the coveted, uh, the coveted three cup coffee cups. And the amazing Don Pettit piece. Of Yay. There you go. Austin, thanks a lot. Thank you Thank so you. much for everything. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, take care, Austin. Um, what? That uh, gets through delegations. Do you want to take a five minute recess yeah. now and uh, before we move into reports? So we'll take a seven minute break. Thank you. Back to order, please. Um, so we're on to uh, reports, item 7, 7.1, report 17079 from the Chief Financial Officer regarding the Climate Action Revenue Incentive Program. Councilor Schumann. Hmm. I would move that report number 17079 from the Chief Financial Officer regarding the Climate Action Revenue Incentive Program. Public report be received and approved as presented. Thank you. Second, Councilor Wilbur. Discussion? All those, Councillor Wolf Schumann? Yeah, I just want to, I, I read the, re, um, the report, and uh, you know, sometimes I get down, I feel like we're not doing enough things, and then I read that report every year, and I think, wow, we are doing a lot of good things. So, I mean, not that we couldn't be doing more, but um, I think that uh, it was a lovely report, and it always makes me feel good to read that report, so. Thank you. Councillor Parzal? Well, just, just to pick up Councillor Schumann, if I may. Um, you people may have missed this. I find a lot of people don't keep up with what's going on in the world. But uh, a celebration just occurred in the UK uh, this week that 28% of the energy needed to keep UK functioning 
hit uh, well, it hit their top ret top mark. Twenty eight percent of the energy is now it came from solar. Wow. And only one percent from coal. And to me, uh, uh, we need we need to recognise that in many parts of the world there are national strategies that are being implemented. And when we think of what may be happening down south around the re-emergence of coal uh, as a fuel for, for thermal, it just appalls me. Yeah. Um, but the progress has been made, and I think it's thanks to a national program. And we lack that in this country. Thank you. Thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. 7.2, we have report 17090 from the Chief Financial Officer regarding the Consolidated Budget Variance Report. Councillor McFadden. For information. Seconded. Councillor Wilbur, discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. 7.3, we have report 17084 from the Director of Corporate Administration regarding a license, liquor license application from Original Joe's. Councillor Schumann. I'm going to report. Number 17084 from the Director of Corporate Administration regarding Original Joe's Entertainment endorsement to their food primary liquor license be received. Further, the Council endorse the comments in this report. <coughs> Further, that a result of the various methods being used to obtain views of the public and none being received, is it is, it, it is assumed that there are no concerns with an entertainment endorsement to Original Joe's food primary liquor license. Thank you. Seconded. Councillor Wilbur, discussion. Ready for the question? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. 7-4, we have report number 17087 from the Director of Corporate Administration regarding an RFQ for our community newsletter. <coughs> Councillor Parswell. I move the report number 17087 from the Director of Corporate Administration. We our community newsletter be received. Further, that staff be authorized to enter into a three-year agreement with Kit Fast for full-color newsletter newsletters at a rate of three thousand dollars in addition plus GST. Further, that the agreement include an option to renew for an additional three-year term. Thank you. Seconded. Councillor Schumann, discussion. Ready for the question? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Seven five. We have report number 17085 from the Director of Corporate Administration regarding the Chamberlain Nature Park. Councillor Schumann. I move report number 17085 from the Director of Corporate Administration regarding the Chamberlain Nature Park upon update to be received. Further, that the staff be authorized to enter into a maintenance agreement with property owners neighboring Chamberlain Park for the maintenance and care of Chamberlain Parkland. Further, that the direction from Council to require any property owners found to be trespassing to remove all structures within a 24-month period be reaffirmed. Further, that staff work with property owners that are found to be trespassing on an individual basis. Thank you. Second to Councillor Wilbur. Discussion? Duncan? So through your worship, uh the original premise that this dealt with fences and sheds has changed a little bit as we've worked our way through this survey. Um, there are some permanent structures not included in the report. The survey was completed later in the week um, that council may want to consider uh, how we're going to move forward with those. They're, they're permanent structures. They're attached to dwellings. They're uh, a lot more complicated than originally thought. So uh, we've had a little bit of discussion uh, briefly uh, after uh, having the results of the survey uh, just on Friday and I've had a brief conversation with uh, Duncan about this. So first off, I think we need to um, have a uh, follow-up public uh, meeting with the folks that are affected and impacted now by these surveys because it's uh, obviously there's some structures in here that are a lot more uh, significant than just as Duncan's indicated fences and things. So we need to now engage with the residents <coughs> in terms of what that is and then start to engage I think in terms of how we move it forward because I think now that the permanency of some of these structures um, it's in uh, I think our best interest to engage with those residents and how do we move forward and finding a solution uh, for these uh, and moving it forward and whether it be um, I think the first step, though, is to engage with those 
property owners again for a second time now and um, have a public <coughs> meeting with them and do that as soon as possible. Councillor Parsel and then Councillor Schumann. Yes, well, I, I had a bit of an advantage Our of Councillor meet, Wilbur. <laughs> <laughs> meeting with uh, Dunton about this uh, CAO on Friday. So I, I don't know if this is in order, so I would refer, defer this to the corporate officer. But I'd like us to defer making this resolution until after our th next meeting with the public. So probably we could just uh, def just table this for the time being. Table, yeah. whatever. Um, I think. Uh, Defer it? Let's put it this way, fellow towns. I was surprised what I learned on Friday, yeah. and I think yeah. you would be when if you had the same information. So I think this, the best thing to do is follow your direction, yeah. have another meeting, and not make any decisions today. Yeah. Defer or table? I defer it? is within the same meeting, so it's defer. Oh, okay, yeah. defer it. Councillor, so can we, <laughs> Councillor, uh, so we'll talk about it, but Councillor Wilbur, you had a comment? Well, I just want some information, actually, which I guess we could get bring it back forward, but through you to staff, given the information that we did receive, um, should I be assuming or not assuming that some of this structure was put in place with or without building permits? <laughs> so there's, over the course of 25 <laughs> or 30 years, Very good so there, over the course of 25 or 30 years, there's been a whole bunch of development occur mm -hmm. uh, without per permits, with permits, or probably without permits. Um, and today we're in the, in the position where we have to now move forward in terms of alleviating uh, the issue that's now being developed and, and built. And so now you've got residents' permanent structures that are, um, are going to be uh, significant in terms of impact. So I think what we first need to do is, it, because we've just got it, we've just got this report on Friday, this, the results of the survey, uh, that gives us a chance for council to see it. Um, and have some further conversation with it. I think we need to have a follow-up conversation and discussion with those residents about moving forward in terms of how we're going to, um, what are our options to move it forward, removing structures, do an AAP to allow them to purchase more property. What, what are those options? But let's fully explore them before we make a decision with only parts of the information today and ensure that we engage those residents down there because in some cases, um, it's it's an it's not going to be a uh, an easy uh, solution to arrive at for any of them and any of and for us as a city. So let's engage with them first. Look at what those options are, consider them all, and then make the uh, council give then the recommendations of how we're going to move it forward. And that's my that's my thought in terms of first step, giving you guys the opportunity to see the information have a public meeting with those residents right away so they can understand some of the ramifications and then talk with them about some of the options of moving it forward. Councillor Rogers? I'll second the motion that we table. Okay. Defer it. Defer it. Defer it. Defer it. Defer it. Defer it. Does, that, does that help you? Does it help? Good idea. It, it, it does help me. I just, in moving forward, when we do have that discussion, um, then I want that information brought forward to those residents that did not get a building permit to put a permanent structure on property that wasn't and, theirs. And some, and so in some cases, it was built. Um, structures were built by previous residents, pe previous homeowners, right? And I would think so, that would be disclosed during the real estate well, it was, transactions. Well, it's some of that, and so that some of that was found at the last public meeting. That <laughs> the homeowners are now having to deal with their realtor because nope. it wasn't disclosed. Yeah, so. I agree, but I'm just being the yeah. devil's advocate yeah. that these are no, questions that I will be asking, um, and I'm sure other people will want to know as well. Yeah. That's all. So we're just we're just going to try to find a way to move it forward because there isn't an easy I like solution win -wins, to it. But I'm just saying I'm going to be so the we're advocate. Got a motion to table defer. or defer, defer to our next uh, meeting. No. Seconded. Sorry, I need a, I was yeah, moved. I need a seconder. Councillor, I, I, I moved it, but it Rogers be deferred seconded. until after the, public the next meeting. public meeting. Okay. So moved, seconded, Councillor Rogers. Discussion. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. And we're going to set this public meeting ASAP, so I'm gone till Monday, but I hopefully we'll be able to find a date next week to do this. Duncan? So through your worship, the, the first step will be putting together that overview. We had the GIS mapping, now we'll uh -huh. have a lot more accurate yeah. information yeah. and we can provide counsel so you can see exactly where those lines fall. Residents are starting to make plans and I know that they're moving fences now as a result of what we have told them and once again, so we need to have, we need to move this along because people are making, I don't want to, 
I don't want to have people making decisions about stuff without us having given final and firm direction. Fair enough. Right? So we really need to have a priority set to get this done ASAP. Do you need that by way of a motion, Duncan? Um, I think we're okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. Um, 7.6, we have report <coughs> 17088 from the Director of Infrastructure regarding an RFQ for electrical services, street lighting. Councillor Parzal. I move the report 17088 from the Director of Infrastructure re RFQ 2017-14 electrical services, street lighting tender results be received. Further, Council award request for quotation 2017-14 electrical services, street lighting to K&O Electric with the unit cost provided in the bid form for a term of three years beginning on June the 1st, 2017, with the option to renew for one additional year. Thank you. Second, Councillor Schumann. Discussion? All those in favour? Opposed? Carry. Thank you. 7-7, seven, seven, we have report 17089 from the Director of Infrastructure regarding our RF, RFQ 2017 for geotechnical services. Councillor Rogers. Move that report number 17-089 from the Director of Infrastructure regarding RFQ 2017-22 geotechnical services tender results be received. Further, that Council award the request for quotation for quotations 2017 to 22 geotechnical <coughs> services to CAMTEC quality management for the 2017 construction year with the unit costs as provided in the bid form. Thank you. Seconded. Councillor uh, McFadden, discussion. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Uh, 7 8, we have report number 17086 from the Parks and Facilities Manager regarding our RFQ for electrical services for our main electrical contract. Okay. Councillor Rogers? Move the report number 17 086 from the Parks and Facilities Manager regarding RFQ 2017 15 electrical services main electrical contract be received further that council award the rfq 2017-15 electrical services main electrical contract to k o electric based on the rate schedule provided in the bid for a three-year term beginning on june the 1st 2017 with an option to renew for an additional year. Thank you. Second, Councillor Schumann. Discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. 7.9, we have report 17083 from the uh, Fire Chief regarding our Dawson Creek Emergency Services uh, Training Center. <coughs> Councillor Schumann? We have report number 17083 from the Fire Chief regarding emergency services training center fees and charges rates be received. Further, that the council be directed, directed to submit an application to the Municipal Insurance Association of British Columbia requesting liability insurance for contractors delivering services on behalf of the City of Dawson Creek. Further, that the required fees be included in the City's fees and charges bylaw and further that staff be authorized to enter into the attached service provider agreement. Thank you. Second to Councillor Wilbur. Discussion? Mm -hmm. Councillor Parzal? Yes, I have a, a bit of a problem here, and uh, I need some help resolving my problem. And it just dawned on me this morning, uh, before I, when I was again going through the agenda early, early hours of the, this morning. Um, so, what, as I understand it, uh, staff, f the fire department staff, on their days off, could function as a private contractor and use these publicly owned facilities uh, as, as a private contractor. And it just struck me, let's take an example. We have the swimming pool and um, it's in the winter it doesn't operate uh, for the public between one and three. Would we allow a lifeguard to be a private contractor to give sort of private lessons? Um, I'm just, uncom just uncomfortable with our employees 
Um, obviously, if they're working beyond their regular shift, they'll get paid for that. But are we not getting ourselves into a bit of a, a mud hole here when our, our employees can serve as contractors using our facilities? So just, uh, that's a general question. Duncan? So through, through your worship, um, <clears throat> the firefighters are contracting, but they're contracting to the city. They're not contracting individually to the renters of the facility. Um, they're hired by the city uh, to offer that instructor or that technician service. It's because they're trained. The availability of anybody else within the community that could do that uh, is very unlikely. Um, we've worked with the union to ensure that we could make this work, and this is uh, the agreement we've come to with the union to ensure that these people are available um, and uh, at effective cost. So, Charlie, I'll give you an example. So, the Charlie Lake Fire Department, uh, as an example, and the uh, electoral area director are very interested in being able to have access to this and they need to have an instructor available in order to deliver it so you either bring in somebody hire somebody as an independent contractor to do that or uh, somebody that's trained to be able to deliver it from within our source our force but they're delivering that service and we get the revenue from the rental of the facility that these guys use it for and so we're really looking at this as an opportunity to leverage that facility um, and you need that trained technician, that trained instructor, in order to deliver the programs. And so that's what it's. That's why we're moving in that regard. Yeah, um, I'm all in favour of the, our staff doing the instructing. I understand that, but sh I don't understand why they would function as a contractor. Why wouldn't it be part of their employment, and, and they receive uh, remuneration for those extra days they work? <gasps> Go ahead, Doc. So through your worship, in, in working with the union to, to reach an arrangement uh, that met both parties' needs and was cost effective, uh, the contract model was looked at uh, to ensure that we could provide the service at a cost affordable to the other departments um, versus uh, providing through the terms of our collective agreement, for lack of a better word. And then if they're employees, they're going to be on shift and, and they take away from our service to our uh, no, regular service, right? Yeah, I was thinking that they would be working overtime and another, you know, uh, on the days off. Bring them in on overtime. Yeah. It's a, it, so we've had a huge amount of interest in the facility, and to me, the best day for us is the more we can leverage that uh, facility that we put that money into. Uh, and we've been sell out there promoting and selling it to all of the communities and the various fire departments as well as industry to be able to utilize it. And for us, this is a way for us to be able to do that and provide the uh, expertise in terms of the delivery of the program. So, go ahead, Councilor Rod. Yeah, I just think that you know the the firemen need their days off um, and picking up the extra extra work. I don't know if that fits into what it, into what. The, the union agreement was for them to actually have time off and the reasons for having time off. But did we even look at um, hiring, because um, I know they do it in 100 Mile House where they hire a part-time facilitator to, to manage it. Um, was that even considered at this point? Okay. So through your worship, we have the, the deputy fire chief. This will be part of his portfolio as far as managing the facility. We'll be booking this facility out. We'll be hiring the contractors as needed for the other uh, communities or organizations to utilize it. So we have that structure in place without hiring somebody. As far as having um, a hired person on site, we don't know what that use looks like yet. We don't really know um, how often it will be used. We're gonna be pushing it out there to those communities. As we move through, we'll have a better idea, but at this point, this is the model that uh, appears as is used in other areas and, and should work. And it's a recoup cost, right? So whoever yep. rents the facility is paying the cost, right? Yeah. And Go ahead. The, the other thing I was looking at is, um, is it's great that we have all the other communities, and that was one thing that we had talked about early on when we were first talking about approving the development of the fire train center. But, um, I have, I've heard about other communities, but I haven't heard anything about industry. Um, I know that industry has to do a lot of training. I think the only other ones we had heard of was P&G gas. We wanted to 
you we really some this is this the first step in terms of getting this we're, we got to get the rates established in terms of what our operating costs are going to be and then and then some of the uh, other folks are out there saying we want to put some capital money up front into it and that will hopefully reduce our operating costs. So we're, we're looking at all those models right now in terms of how do we find a way to make sure that we leverage that place the best way we can yep. and that facility for the benefit of uh, our community and our taxpayers. Right. So we're, we're looking at all of that. This is the first step in getting some, so before you go to somebody and say okay we're gonna, it's going to cost you 200 bucks an hour, you got to know how much it's going to cost you. So we got to get this stuff in place first. Yep. Councillor Wilbur? Uh, I just want to add that I think, you know, staff's done a great job in putting this together and looking at the fees, but also the fact that we have the opportunity to utilize our expertise within our own um, kind of foundation of the community. So for me, I think this is a great way to move forward. And um, I, I, you know, I just think of when Beaverly was here taking training. So it's going to be utilized by those fire departments that don't have it in their area. So I, I think kudos to staff and, and the fire department and everyone that's gotten us to where we want it to be. <coughs> Great job. We're plowing new ground too, right? So the more you the more you get into it for a year or two years or three years, you'll understand the operational issues that you're facing in terms of what you got to tweak to make it better or change or whatever. And uh, this is a brand new opportunity. But I think the more we can find ways to make it a revenue center for us to drop, bring some revenue in to offset the costs, then we should be doing that. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. Uh, item eight bylaws. Report 8.1, uh, Report 17078 from the Director of Corporate Administration regarding our annual business license regulation amendment bylaw. Brenda, do you want to just briefly uh, fess up yeah. what we did? <laughs> yes, fess we did up. make an error. Um, we we uh, amended the previous bylaw instead of the newly. Um, I'll, I'll back up. I'm Tisk, tisk. <laughs> um, when we did the bylaw notification system, there were many bylaws there. Um, we um, amend instead of amending the bylaw, we replaced it in its entirety. Um, since then, we made a consolidated version and just got a mix up of the numbers. And um, this is just basically a correction. We Fixing up. Repeal the last bylaw. And amend the newly created bylaw. So there is, that's very confusing, but um, in the end. Wrong numbers. So we are weird. So weird. <laughs> so weird. Uh, Thanks, Brenda. We'll uh, fix it just, up. Whatever Brenda just wants. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Just very unclear. Just. Uh, trust me. Just. <laughs> we trust you. So we need a motion, Councillor Parzal. That report 17078 from the Director of Corporate Administration regarding annual business license and regulation amendment bylaw number 4357, 2217, be received. Further, the bylaw 4357 be provided first three readings and that there be a public flogging of the corporate office. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> At a time, in, a time to be nominated later. Yes. Seconded. Only Councillor we remove the last part <laughs> publicly. All in favor? Opposed? Carry. Thank you. Uh, item 9, uh, Mayor's Business. And uh, so I want to start, uh, we've got uh, staff working away on the time capsule, uh, the 50th anniversary uh, time capsule that was in the Centennial Pool and uh, the, the uh, date that we've uh, been designated by our forefathers was July 1st, 2017. So we've got the, we obviously didn't, as we had indicated earlier, we don't want to interfere with our neighbors and our friends and Pooscoopy with their barbecue and parade and things. So we're going to do it on July 1st in the afternoon, starting at 3 o'clock out at the Pioneer Village. Uh, and we'll do, we've got some family events we'll do and are there organizing away on. <coughs> um, we met with the college, um, the Trades Training Center, and there's kind of a cool link there today because we're having a brand new Trades Training Facility built. Um, and um, so we've talked to them about building a new time capsule uh, for the 150th anniversary of our uh, city and country. Our guess our country and uh, so the thought would be as we open that new time capsule on July 1st and uh, perhaps uh, put some 
uh, items into the new ca time capsule for 50 years. And maybe some of the stuff that we take out of the time capsule could go into the new one for uh, another 50 years. And um, so anyway, the college are really excited about the opportunity in their trades program to build a new time capsule and they're taking that underway and we'll have that uh, ready for display on July 1st as well. And so if council, anybody has any ideas of things that they'd like to see go into it, it'll be similar in size to the other one. It's a cylinder and it's not very big, but uh, somebody suggested, you know, I was talking about maybe a flash drive with the city's promotional video, but who knows in 50 years if they're going to have anything to play it with. <laughs> um, but um, anyway. Um, Do we have cassette players to play with? <laughs> yeah, the 8-track player, or tape player. player. Um, so anyway, that's just a quick update on the time capsule. It is moving forward and uh, really, we've had lots of interest from folks from uh, families from a long time ago that were here and I got a call from Ron Witherspoon's uh, note from Dave Witherspoon, Ron Witherspoon's son, who emceed Ron was the mayor. Um, I don't know if he was, the, I think Bob Trail was a mayor at the time, but Ron was obviously a mayor in the city and his son wants to know when and what's going on. And so there's been that kind of interest from folks and wanting to come, so it's hard to set it as another date. So, um, I had uh, reached out to the Treaty 8 Tribal Chiefs Association, I'm going to say in March, to get their, uh, do a presentation to them, talked about getting a letter of support for our hospital renovation project, which they did, and talked about how the common components of things that we work on as uh, within our community and our region, health, education, were two of them. And I talked about uh, the city. in the city, we've got these amazing facilities, um, staff that have uh, expertise, and we could, uh, I think, be establishing and working uh, that as neighbors in so many different ways and looking to establish those relationships with uh, some of our Treaty 8 uh, First Nation communities. So about a week after the presentation, I got a call from uh, the uh, Treaty 8 Economic Development Officer and one of the things I had talked about was our Calvin Crook Center and the Historical Society and how what a great facility it is. And um, So anyway, Josh uh, from the Treaty 8 uh, economic development officer for the Treaty 8 Tribal Association come down and we spent three or four hours touring the city and touring different aspects of the community and we really went through a real uh, nice uh, tour of the historical society and the uh, archives and uh, so anyway it was just it was just a really a good opportunity to demonstrate uh, the partnerships that um, we could establish by working together. Uh, I was at the Lawrence Hill, um, uh, author was in town and um, he wrote, uh, he's written a number of books I think, uh, I want to say the Book of Negroes yeah. and um, he's on his, he's do, he was on his way up the highway and he's doing some uh, work on, uh, wants to write a book on the highway and the, uh, the black soldiers, the African American soldiers who worked on the highway construction. And so he's doing a bunch of research material on the uh, highway and that component, and he's intending to write a book on it. So they had a, an event at the art gallery, and um, he did a reading of his book. And so I attended on behalf of council and welcomed him to the community. And it was very, very good, very well attended. Councilor Parsons? He was also uh, using the archives. Uh, oh, yeah, right. He said that, yeah. Um, Last week, uh, the week before, I went to Calgary for two days uh, and uh, used it as an opportunity to um, spend some time with our industry uh, components that are folks that are doing in the region, Spectra Enbridge uh, and Canada, Trans Canada, uh, CAP, Canadian Association of Petroleum Producers, um, and really talked about how for us the uh, building of community is, comes from that economic uh, partnerships that exist with industry and how we really look to them to mm -hmm. support our community and support our businesses and it's just a continuation of that message of working with industry. Trans Canada uh, this week uh, Councillor Schumann and I are heading to FCM um, and the Trans Canada have put together a promotional video uh, that we worked uh, with them. I think I gave Council a bit of an update on it um, and so we're launching that video on Friday at the Federate or Trans Canada are launching it at the Federation of Canadian Municipalities, and it's a promotional video for them, uh, and it's and it's promoting the partnership that exists with community and businesses in a community. And so this video um, will showcase six or eight uh, local business people who will talk about that, 
and TransCanada will be using it across Canada as they talk about their industry, their partnerships that they have with communities. And I'm re I've, obviously I've seen it and I showed it at the Chamber AGM, but it's very well done. Hank, we got Hank Bridgman put it together with uh, uh, TransCanada and okay. it's a great job. And so I'm really excited about being able to show it to the community, but I'm going to hold off until it's launched by TransCanada this week in Ottawa. And they've asked me to attend and Councillor Schumann to attend their reception where it'll be launched and we'll be speaking to it. Um, week before last, what's that? I said yay. <laughs> the Chamber of Commerce held their annual general meeting at the golf course a week ago Friday. Uh, it was very well attended. There was probably 45 people in attendance. Uh, I think the, the uh, new executive were sworn in. We got a full slate of folks uh, on the chamber uh, as directors. Great, great uh, participation. Uh, Kathleen and the chamber had asked if I would come and do a keynote uh, address. On so we talked about all the different things that we've been working on from council with finance and initiatives and economic and all of the different components that we work on in council and it was just, uh, really really well attended and really appreciated the opportunity to participate um, with the uh, chamber and uh, their membership and I had one other one that I forgot to put on my mayor's business and it was Friday the uh, consul general um, from the Philippines from Vancouver was in town and he was here spending a couple of days in the Peace, Dawson Creek and Fort St. John meeting with the uh, Filipino community and the residents and so I spent an hour with them on Friday morning and met with him and the Kalipi South Peace executive and uh, I'll reiterate uh, to him, uh, to you, uh, uh, what I said to him, the, the, the longer I've been in the role of the mayor these last three or four years, the thing I'm struck by these, uh, this Filipino community is two things. They're amazingly committed to family and community. Mm -hmm. And they're the folks that are coming out to our community cleanup, and they're very involved in their community in so many ways. And I love the passion that they have for each other and their family as well as the community. And they demonstrate that uh, every time I have any interaction with them, and they're incredibly hardworking. They don't, they don't want to come to <laughs> get a job. They want two jobs, and <laughs> they want to work as much as they can. And, and so, I told them that how much we value that in terms of our community because I remember years about four or five years ago coming home from the lake one night and it was about six o'clock and I said to my wife I said uh, I phoned her I said baby don't worry about dinner like she would have and I said I'll just stop and get a burger or something I stopped at the A&W it was five after six it was closed because of lack of staff and that was the note on their door our hours are nine to six because of lack of employees and today there is a segment of that Filipino community that come in and work in that service sector that are filling that gap that existed in our community and it's a necessary uh, uh, workforce that's required in any community to help build it and so I think that that we they, they sometimes are underappreciated how much we value what they do and we have a population in Dawson Creek now of about five or six hundred people and so um, I love the passion they have for community because that's what we all have and so I come in off of my day off on Friday to meet the Philippine Consulate General. That's it for me under Mayor's business. And that was a nice picture. Councillor Parcel. Yeah. yeah, nicely said. Uh, I, I find the Filipino community just fantastic. Um, first of all, appreciate, uh, you know, your outreach to Treaty 8 and what you're doing there. And it's just triggered an alert in my mind and I want to apologize to the, for making this request but I'm going to a meeting tomorrow afternoon and I need the advice of I think the corporate officer um, <laughs> it's to do with the um, the archives and I am I'm wondering I need to to like our, our, our conversation has been about the fact that we can offer a lot of services to the whole Peace region given the facility and its control features for archives. But it's got to be staffed by a qualified archivist if we're to receive all these grant opportunities, uh, work experience and this, that and the other. And I, I was wondering, I, I can't find anything definitive on the qualifications uh, that a person needs to have 
for this archives here to be a recognized archive center. And I was wondering if you have any <laughs> leads on that, or to spend just 15 minutes of your time, maybe. I, my research is going nowhere on it. Uh, through your worship, I did have a meeting um, with Stu Flynn about this, and I just recommended that they contact communities around to find job descriptions for archivists, archivists and um, I haven't heard anything back from them. But that, that's where they were to start, and then once they developed a job description, we would help distribute it. But they they, they have done. they have done that. I've reviewed the job description, and then the big flash that goes up in my mind about it isn't about the job descriptions. It's the qualification to fulfill oh, that. They have done a lot of work. Frank Brioltz has been very involved, and Lynn Washington. Um, and I've reviewed the job description. I have no problems. It's a great job description. It's the qualifications. So uh, Caitlin Treble was like had the background, like the education no. to do it. No, I, like not saying to hire her. I'm not anything. in a I'm position to say yes or no. My judge says a degree in history, right, doesn't cut it. No, no, I, I wouldn't think either. It would no. be a. Mm. What has she got? So no, well, I. Duncan? So through your worship, we can <coughs> we can direct the councillor towards the website that all city and local government jobs are posted, and there may be some qualifications in there. But I think it's the aspect of the facility and becoming a designated archive yeah, center, archive center yeah. is what the issue is, and do is there any criteria around that anywhere that could then yeah. layer the position? Yeah, into right. So we'll we, we may be able to find that through this. Okay. Website. So I'm saying before that job is posted, I want to make sure that we're not yeah. digging a hole for ourselves. No. And that we right no. Yeah. Okay. Did you go to the association? Councilor Wilbur. A uh, different topic. If they're yeah, they're done. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just <laughs> uh, during proclamations about the trailer for tourism on the lawn, do we have to do anything with that, or they're okay to just you guys will. If council would like to make a motion, that would be helpful. Sure. Okay. I'll make that motion. <laughs> Thank you. Seconded, Second Councillor Schumann. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carry. Thank I'm you. Hang out in it. That's, uh, that's it for Mayor's Business Diary, Residential Development Committee. Councillor Parzal? Um, I'm, I'm just, uh, would like to put forward a, another item for the diary. I know it's on the list of things, uh, but. Um, I don't want it to get lost with a change in council and down the road or what have you. And I'm not being facetious when I make that comment, <laughs> honestly, I'm not. <laughs> um, it's the public art policy. Um, I would just, I, it's uh, something that we made a motion of, and I know staff have it on their list. I just want to see it there so we don't forget okay. about it. It's in uh, somebody's report. What's that? Yeah, through your worship, it is in my yes in about work. Yes, and um, I'm hoping to get that policy out by the end of June. All right, fine. So let's let's leave it for that now until after that policy is developed, and then we can make the decision. <laughs> if he if wasn't taking up 15 right. minutes of her time, she'd be all. <laughs> so anything further under diary? See, you don't nothing need to report your consent <laughs> calendar. <laughs> so moved. So moved. Move. Councillor McFadden, second to Councillor Schumann. Discussion. Um, that was a very interesting uh, letter from BC Hydro regarding the PREZ project. Yes, and I want them to come and do a presentation and we'll work on that. Mm -hmm. Brenda? Through your worship, if you wanted to take any action from that letter, you should move it out of the consent calendar and then you could. Uh, we'll have some further discussion. I think I had some discussion offline about it. Okay. So, I hope, anyway. With. Maybe my lips weren't moving then. Uh, all in favor? Opposed? Carry. Thank you. Strategic priorities? Nothing to report, Your Worship. Question and answer period? No one has signed up. Media? Trent? Good. You, you guys are good? One, 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 Marnie, last one? One? Last yeah, meeting? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> no, is this your last meeting? Yes. This is it? You're finished? Yeah. yeah. When do you? Kendall's going to be taking over for me. When's your last day? Been here for about three months or so, so. When's your last day? 
Uh, today. Today? Oh. oh. Well, congratulations. As I said to Austin, uh, we always uh, hate to see you guys go, but we understand that's uh, part of uh, what happens. So we want to wish you the very best. All the, uh, always in your future. Where are you off to? Uh, Global Regina. Nice. Yeah. Good job. Kendall, welcome. Um, Committee of the Whole. So do you want to take a five minute break while we get to Committee of the Whole? Sure. We're in good shape for time. <laughs> If people make Council motions. Council McFadden is not. Uh, to our uh, regular council meeting and into our committee of the whole reports, item 15, 15 1. We have a report from our staff sergeant and um, our newly uh, promoted staff sergeant Richard. Oh no, it's Sergeant Richard. <laughs> I'd like to do that though. <laughs> good morning, good morning, welcome. He nice handles to have us, you on a. He handles us with grace, doesn't he? Lay, lovely spring morning. Nice, reason I've never had my nose broken. <laughs> <laughs> nice to have you here this morning. Thank you. Good it's morning. a beautiful day out. Um, can, we, okay, I, can we have the. Uh, oh, I was going to do the show and tell later, but we can do that now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> show and tell. <laughs> this is our new sergeant, Sergeant Nancy Sergeant Tell. Tell. Uh, nice. She's up from uh, Surrey. She was with our, with um, in our headquarters there with National Security Unit. Oh, okay. And she joined us here what three weeks ago or so. And she's uh, taken over the position of the uh, support NCO there. Where. So uh, we're glad to have awesome. her. She's already hit the ground running, which is thankful for me. Welcome. <laughs> it's nice to have you here. Welcome. Thank you. Yes, welcome. Be here. Excited. Good. Thank you. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> Should have kept with the program. Um, I guess as far as file count, uh, our files are pretty much remain the same from this time last year. I think they went down by eight files, which is kind of insignificant. Um, our mental health calls for service, uh, I think we had 18 for the month. We had uh, three apprehensions with uh, almost 20 hours involved with those three apprehensions. Um, one of our constables, J Jamie Echo, uh, she just uh, successfully completed the media liaison course, which means she'll be our local uh, okay. contact and uh, putting all our local media releases down. Um, I think you guys all have a, a sample copy of what we, we started putting out. Basically, she does a summary of what happens week to week, and she sends it out to the local media, and, uh, and uh, hopefully they'll keep going for an extended period of time, oh, good. keep everybody informed. The um, on the staffing front, uh, we're anticipating some shortages. Uh, reason being, we still have those two members uh, waiting to sell their homes. Uh, we've got another fellow that's been, been plucked out of her ranks. He's going to be going to the island uh, to uh, Port Hardy. Is that mm -hmm. Port McDeal? Is one of the ports down there. Um, he's still got to go through his medical and, and the transferring process. So we, we got him for a few months yet. And uh, but on the good news, we got an eight-year member identified out of uh, Iqaluit. <coughs> coming here. Um, he's well reported on, so we're looking forward to having him uh, you know, join us here in Dawson <coughs> Creek. And we're still having some truck thefts and thefts from trucks. Um, I know we've talked uh, in the past few months about uh, asking people to, to, to lock your vehicles and don't leave valuables in the vehicles and stuff like that, but they're still finding easy marks out there and stuff still going missing. Keys are still being left in the vehicles. Uh, so please, if you're talking to anybody, remind them, lock your vehicles, keep your stuff in the house. And uh, I think that's pretty much it. Yeah. Councillor Schumann. Hi, good morning. Good. Um, and welcome to Dawson Creek. Thank you. Um, so we hear a lot in the news about the fentanyl crisis in BC and um, I'm kind of curious I mean we hear of young people that have passed away in the community but you, you know you don't know why or whatever but I'm curious to know um, how that's affecting our community and if you're getting uh, calls out for over like you know I'm, I'm just curious what what is our ratio of the province's <clears throat> fentanyl crisis are we are we seeing that here in Dawson are we seeing the overdoses are we seeing overdose deaths um, as far as the numbers and the, and the stats and stuff though um, I don't have that for you I can tell you we are seeing it here in our community 
um, the ambulance service attends it um, quite often more frequently than we do. Um, if it involves a death, it becomes a BC Coroner's Act investigation. Um, so as far as the stats and the numbers and stuff like that, I just don't have that for you. Um, but it is going on here in Dawson. Thanks. Any further questions? Councillor Parzal? Yeah, this is just a refreshment for me. A um, couple of rural folks asked me about uh, rural police work. And I said uh, to them that uh, there were two members who were sort of, I thought there were two members who were funded for the specific purpose of rural policing. Is that correct or wrong? We have four provincial positions. Four. Which are they assigned for rural police work? They're each each watch. We have four watches here in Dawson. Yeah. And each watch has one rural member on that watch. Okay. Um, their primary duties uh, are rural, but they insist they insist they assist with whatever comes in during the day. Okay. So supplementary to that, I I said I felt that of the the rural police work i had seen a report from you or your staff sergeant that said about 80 percent of the rural calls were being handled by municipal police yeah i remember is that the, about right i forget what the percentage was but it was it was high yeah, yeah. that was in her last month I yeah the, the, the complaint, the the complaint was that uh, there was a lack of policing in the rural area and i said much of it was being covered by our municipal <coughs> force. I said about 80% based upon the impression I had. So you, you would be comfortable with me saying that sort of thing? I knew it was a high percentage, yeah. and, and it sounds close, but without having it in front of me, I can't say. Yeah. I think absolutely, Councillor Parcel was okay. in the last report uh, from Marcel and our Committee of the Whole, and he absolutely identified that percentage of files that were being handled by municipal members, as well as how many municipal files were being handled by rural. So it gave that absolute breakdown because I know that was the concern about the amount of work that was being handled by uh, the municipal members in the rural area. Yeah. So their concern was just lack of policing. Yeah, it is. Yeah. But driven by file count and, oh, well, and all that stuff, right? Staffing so, and yeah. stuff, yeah. yeah. Any other questions? Well, thank you uh, again for coming in. It's good to see you guys. Uh, Nancy, welcome. And I uh, hope you have a long and enjoyable stay in uh, the Dawson Creek area. Sure we will. Thank so you. Uh, report from our fire chief. Morning, chief. Good morning. So there's nothing remarkable in the report. Uh, it's kind of an average month. Um, I guess one of the things I want to touch bases on is the firefighters continue to raise money in the community. Their golf, or probably their poker tournament last month, uh, sixteen thousand five hundred dollars. That's that's pretty good, and that's going to go to some of it's going to go to the burn fund, and then some of it's going to go to the firefighters' charitable organization that they've started, so that they can uh, deal with that money within their own community how they see fit. Kid sport. So that's good to see. You know, hats off to those guys. Um, another thing I want to mention, the, it, we talked a bit about uh, the fentanyl. Well, I was at a workshop in Prince George last week on fentanyl. And as bad as fentanyl is, it's not the worst out there. Um, uh, they've got a new drug called W18 that's stronger than fentanyl. And the problem with it is that it doesn't work the same as fentanyl, so the Narcan may not work with it. So now we're fighting that. So it was a good workshop. It was. Uh, uh, a lot of it was to do with what first responders need to do if they accidentally walk into it. Like we get a lot of uh, false alarms for uh, <coughs> residential uh, smoke alarms. So if we ever walk into one of those, there's certain things that we need to do to keep our firefighters safe. So that's what that workshop kind of focused <coughs> on. So we're, it's just, it's not a matter of if we find it, it's a matter of when. So yeah. we uh, take every step we can to make sure our firefighters are safe. Thanks, Chief. Um, springtime, so wet, we didn't have too much in the way of issues for the local uh, grass fires and that kind of traditional stuff? Nothing, uh, nothing that was reported to me, so we had a couple of basement uh, uh, 
leaks, but I mean they're they're more of a I think a maintenance issue than a than a flooding issue. Yeah. Okay. Councilor McFadden. Have we talked about a, a council tour of your new training yes. facility and maybe a demonstration of some type? Is that in the works or? Yeah, we're hoping to get the groundwork done before we get everybody out there. Yeah. It's uh, if if we get a little bit of rain, it gets really yeah. muddy out there. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we're just waiting for the ground to dry up uh, considerably before they can get in there with the equipment and and level the ground up and harden it up. Thank you. I look forward to that. And we should be arranging that. Where will you be doing that with your other peers in the uh, region as well, Chief? For uh, the other detachments to be able, to, or you know what I, I guess I'm even thinking about the other municipal leaders who now have, know about it, and perhaps we should be considering that as well to do a tour for them as well. Yeah. Um, tomorrow night I go to Chetwin uh, to talk to their fire department about the facility and how they can use it and whatnot. So I'm hoping to be able to. The chief is really interested there, so it's just a matter of giving them the fine details now. Yeah. Yeah. So. Good. Mr. Rogers. Hi. Mr. McFadden, go. I just want to watch that sucker burn. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions for the chief? Yes, we sh we need to put that as a kind of a tech that we want to do them get on those to organize those tours both for council as well as so I wouldn't mind having a, to have the Peace River Regional District uh, leadership because I know that they've all talked about it and we want their money. <laughs> really? Thanks, chief. Yes. <laughs> Uh, 15-3, we have the re a report from the Director of Corporate Administration. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Thank you. Nice to have you here today. Um, I'll just highlight a couple of items <laughs> in my report. The um, tourism um, new governance model, the RFP is going to be posted shortly for that. We have signed the three-month extension with um, Northern BC Tourism, so we're good until the end of December. Um, with the, regards to the archivist, we will reach out to um, colleagues around the province and just see if we can find some qualifications, and then we can assist that way. And we only have um, the major item taking um, the time of corporate administration is uh, the tenders. So after budget approval, there's always onslaught of tender postings to be put out so that's what we're doing with at the moment <laughs> unless there's any questions just that i wish to take back my public flooding of the corporate <laughs> officer because she didn't have public flooding of me so <laughs> i see it black and white i don't know why i missed it <laughs> so anyway, so we're, we're equal. Do we <laughs> Public or policy? <laughs> boss isn't always right, but he's always right the boss. There. Um, I Things just there's one. there's one <laughs> item under Brenda's report that I just has triggered me that uh, on my Calgary trip, and I did talk to the industry folks about our truck waste facility because we had talked about that in terms of looking for uh, contribution of revenue towards the truck waste facility and those that I spoke to and I'll continue to reach out to the others that I wasn't able to meet with but they really say we build it into our operating costs and build a build a contingency into that for the long-term replacement of the facility into your operating costs outside of your normal costs of operations because right. to me I really like the idea of building a dedicated capital fund in there for that truck waste facility from industry or those users but the industry guys all said just instead of getting us to try to make a commitment over a long term just build it into the use and if we're using 10% of it, then give us another 10, charge us another 10% for that capital uh, fund, and build it that way. So, anyway, I'll, I'll talk to administration and Shelley off the side of that. I just it just triggered me about my Calgary trip, and you guys did ask that I talk about that when I went. So, my apologies, I forgot to do that. Uh, anything further for Brenda? Thanks, Brenda. You're welcome. Um. Chief Financial Officer, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Mayor. So good to see you. Thank you. So uh, in the report, it basically tidies up the last budget cycle. I took a week off, got my brain back uh, functioning properly. You look good, too. Thanks. A little bit of sun will, <laughs> a little bit of sun will do you a world of good. And uh, yesterday, talking to staff, I opened up the 28 budget file, and she was, oh my goodness, I'm not done 2017, and it was good that we opened it up because council is 
already making decisions for next year. So, <laughs> so it's that's how fast time goes by. It, it's just you close off one and the cycle uh, goes into the other one. Uh, the biggest part of this report, I think, is to do with the capital projects, and you're going to see that um, throughout the next six months. Heavy, heavy capital program for 2017, and uh, these are some of the big projects that uh, will be reported out on. Um, the other thing I just wanted to uh, bring your attention to is, uh, in the news and the notes, the intercompany business license program has been initiated and we've already received six uh, applications. So that's good at starting off. Mm -hmm. And then also uh, tax collection time has begun. Traffic has increased um, downstairs and the staff are, are doing what they do annually and uh, we're not reporting out any stats because it's, it's too early. Um, on the comment that you just made about the um, rate on new facilities. Um, one of the things that uh, is happening um, when you bring in um, asset management principles is to actually have that replacement um, part of the rate in the operating rate. So we do that already with our, <coughs> pardon me, our water and our sewer funds where we have the vari variable rate that goes to annual operations in the infrastructure is for long term. So it's the same same kind of thing. Okay. So as far as the setting the rate structure for the new facility, we can do that um, with a similar model and that's where you're going to get, uh, you know, dedicated funds for infrastructure replacement. Mm -hmm. And then you'll have the operating rate, but it'll all be, you can combine them in one. Good. Yeah, so um, we're on that. So, And other than that, it's just business as usual. Um, all the reporting requirements are being met on time. and. Uh, if council has any questions, um, yeah. Shelley, one of the things that we had saw initially was the, um, I think our last quarterly report was the amount of tax um, revenue that had been, we saw an increase in the deferral of tax payments by people. And is that, are we starting to see a little swing in that with that people catching up to that? Yeah, through your worship. So that was uh, basically um, a collection report that you received. Uh, I think it was at the last meeting. I won't make any comments until closer to July 1. You'll start to see. That was the first indication that maybe there is a cash flow problem out there. But unless you get the second one, okay. which is on the collection report, right till we report right out or quickly, we report quickly after the deadline. And oh. you will see what that looks like. That'll be either a positive or a negative indicator of where things are going. So I'll just defer okay. uh, Thank concluding on that. Councillor no, Parzel, just a few things uh, on the. These uh, this is nothing new. It's just uh, questions about uh, when this work might uh, happen or what is council going to do about it. Uh, so I refer to page one of your report under fiscal responsibility and sustainability. Um, in you, under the heading, the following three actions remain to be completed. Council to develop core values and guiding principles for the fiscal DAP initiative. It seems to me that uh, the way that's written is we need to schedule that uh, work. It's a, it's a, I think its staff has done all it can do. It's got all the stats, uh, so it's, it begs to me that we need to put that on some appropriate meeting agenda. The next bullet, council, to establish targets for buy-in by internal and external. It seems again something that we need to to do. The council to review the detail the city the city services policy that's deferred until after the OCP. And then I move on to the next one, the following four uh so the four following actions have been completed, okay. um, but the third, the fourth bullet in that says staff developed for council and the community educational materials relative to the fiscal gap initiative. It, that begs to me for council. What are we going to do with it? Uh, the materials there, um, and how are we going to get that material in in an understandable way to the community? So. I just say that there's four things there that we, as council, uh, uh, need to take 
some proactive initiative on. So I just would, would uh, like to see if something to maybe ha can happen in that regard. Sure. And I noticed that uh, the financial officer didn't say that you looked good today either. He never did. <laughs> No tie. <laughs> no tie. <laughs> it's spring. <laughs> it's spring. Uh, through, through your worship, we have to maintain professional that's boundaries right, in the council that's chambers. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The well, mayor. You, do so, look, you do look good. The mayor Thank you. can do it. So we'll, um, and we will now, uh, and I'll certainly take that. We'll have some conversation with Duncan now. Uh, budget cycle is completed, and uh, so we'll start that. Uh, planning process for uh, those uh, necessary uh, areas that now have been identified uh, for us to start to uh, put some work towards that. Uh, anything further for Shelley? Thank you, Shelley. 15-5, uh, report from our Director of Infrastructure. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Thank you. Nice to see you today. Yes, hello. You look good. Thank you. <laughs> you told me you're nowhere. Yardler. Yeah, All right. I'm just going to get started. started. Chris, just, I'd just like to move on. A, there. Uh, a couple things for a quick update. Uh, truck waste handling facility, Higgy Construction, uh, excavated the footprint for the building just prior to the rain. Um, so they've actually were dealing with the water issues and should be back uh, working there again this week. So it's exciting to see that project moving forward. Uh, the RV sandy dump, all the gravels are in and they're getting ready to pour the concrete island. So we hope to get that up and running shortly. I understand the May long weekend was fairly busy at the RV sandy dump at the Mile Zero uh, campsite. So it be good to have that one online shortly. Uh, raw Water Reservoir also had a little bit of a setback with all of the rain, but I see they've mowed some equipment on the weekend and they hope to get stripping this week. So also very excited to see that project moving forward. Treated Water Reservoir, uh, Bear Mountain Construction has actually filled one side of the reservoir for testing. They will be testing this week. If all goes well, they'll move to filling the other side of the reservoir and testing it. So everything is moving along nicely there and uh, hope to have that project commissioned and online by early July. Um, our sweepers have done one entire pass over the city. Things are starting to look really good. They're actually in the process of doing a second pass as well. Some of those stragglers that are getting the rocks off of their yard and uh, and give it one more total sweep so hopefully we'll be done that within a within a week or so and uh, we'll be able to move into line painting i know they're getting ready to start crosswalks right away uh, and of course our patching machine uh, continues to to run and uh, we've got the majority of uh, the major potholes dealt with however uh, in times of rain and such a wet spring, once again, uh, there still is a number of them that they are out there dealing with. Uh, as I, just to recap, I talked about this obviously first thing today, um, but Peter Brothers will be going in to excavate and deal with 108th Avenue at the end of this week, so hopefully uh, it won't be near as bad a state and we can get things fixed back up and at least uh, have proper access into our cemetery until we, we look at a bigger picture in regards to what council chooses to do with the road uh, possibly in 2018. Um, and in saying that, that's pretty much what I had for an update unless there's any questions. Questions, Councillor Schumann? Is this your last cow before you move off to the regional district? So this is my last cow. Well, um, I'm sad to see you go, but um, we've absolutely appreciated all that you've uh, accomplished at the city, and uh, yeah, I'll see you out there. But um, question, the little patch of road in front of the bakery down at the NAR Park. Oh, yeah. Yes. It's some bakeries. Like, my car almost yeah. fell in. Is that ours? It's or? private property. Private. Oh. So I know um, our director of development had actually worked with the property owner, and they're trying to look at possible solutions um, from the private side, of course, to deal with their issues, and they were just more looking for advice from the development department on how they could move forward to try and remediate those issues. 
And thank you very much. It's also, um, you know, it's it, as much as it's uh, hard for me to, to leave a wonderful job and a bunch of wonderful people that I've worked with for a number of years, I'm, I'm very excited about a new opportunity. And I thank you all for the support. So um, thank you. And um, I want to uh, just say that uh, obviously um, you start out these uh, really amazing young people that come to work for the city and uh, spend 15 or 20 years. I'm not sure what you got, 18 or? 18. Yeah. And, um, and, I, and I say this, right? We, we, we do. We, we, you raise your kids to leave home. You raise your kids to be successful, and you hope that you give them all the opportunity that allows them to be successful. And so sincerely, to see you develop into uh, the director of infrastructure for the city, and starting, I think, in the role of as surveying and, and engineer, in your engineering, and develop up into a senior role, and now to move on to uh, that new role, a more senior role in, uh, with the Peace River Regional District. I don't know if that's a secret or not, but it isn't anymore. Um, and, uh, and so we honestly uh, are exactly that, right? Your, your babies leave home, you're sad to see them go, but you wish them well. And so we really want to express our best to you, and we know we'll keep interacting and seeing you lots, but um, we really wish you the best and to you and your family and you'll still be part of our community and part of our re region and uh, but we really want to wish you the best and thank you for everything that you've given to the city of Dawson Creek because uh, we appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thanks Sean. 15-6, Director of Community Services, is he leaving? Oh no, she's in now. <laughs> are you not leaving, are you? <laughs> Everybody's leaving today. <laughs> good morning, Shante. Good morning. Welcome. How are you guys? Good. Good. So it's a great time of year. It's spring. Very busy time for community Ooh. services. Parks are getting, grass is getting cut. The trees are blooming. And people are in the sports field, so when you're in the parks. And speaking of that, we had a great event this weekend. Our park and play. It's been a full year since we have done that. Our recreation staff, uh, Aaron, Megan, and Chelsea, did a great job. We had about 300 people participate in Kitchen Park, and it was outside where it was anticipated. So they had said it was a great success. Um, the million swimmer was in as well. Um, the, the swim that we had for the Tumi swim. We had a Tumi swim and climb on Friday, and we had 203 people participate in that Tumi swim, and we had 20 climbers. So that was great. Um, right now we have very low registration for the summer fun program, um, so it closes this coming Friday. Uh, we will be, if we do not meet the full subscription of the registration, we'll be having a report in for you guys on June 12th with the outcome of that. Um, the curling rink slab um, had one bid received and uh, Levi will be reviewing um, that bid. You talked about the swap and shop. The swap and shop um, was not going to be rescheduled this year. Um, Melanie had directed people to go to Arlene Delosky for the yard sale for the cure, and that was held last weekend, and they raised approximately $4,000, so she was quite excited about that. And the time capsule, we just want to kind of give update. I know that you had given an update. Uh, July 1st is the date, as you said, from 3 to 6, and uh, the staff that's working on that is Lindsay Bork, uh, along with some other people, and it's going to be at Pioneer Village, and the entertainment is going to be a band from 3 to 4.30, um, a tour of Pioneer Village with people dressed um, in period clothes, the old clothing, as well as from 4.30 to 5 will be barbecue and entertainment, um, and 5 to 6 will be the time council presentation, where they'll open up the time council from 50 years ago. And then, as you talked about earlier, that there's going to be the new time capsule that uh, the college is working on. And then other activities that will be included will be the bouncy castle and some kids' activities as well. So we, that was where I'm at. Is there any questions on the report? We have a couple of neat things that we're going to do after we do that. Councillor Rover? Um, about how many registrations do we need for the summer fund program for it to be a go? There needs to be 15 full-time registrants or $28,000. It was kind of a mixture of, of whatever that was. Okay. And we've got two. So we have 15. We need 15 full-time. How many do we have registered? For There's two part-time and two full-time right now. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I think. Are you? Yes, one more? No, nope, uh, that was it. Councillor yep. Schumann? Oh, but McFadden had his hand up. Oh, Councillor Schumann? Oh. 
Um, I just want to say that the sports fields are one? awesome. I've been out there at soccer <laughs> and at baseball, and we appreciate the work that's being done on the uh, ball diamonds, and the soccer fields are beautiful. So thanks for well, all that. Yes. Thank you. Councillor McFadden. Well, thank you, Your <laughs> The uh, time capsule opening is July the 1st, Walter Wright, at what time? 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Schumann? Will the um, contents be on display anywhere? Like, I'm away. I won't be here for that. But um, will they be on display anywhere? Or do we get to see well, them we'll, if we're not there on that day? Yeah, we'll document them pretty well. And we haven't... We're. Uh, I, we haven't really locked it in, but I think the idea is that we'll take some of that stuff that's in there and perhaps put it back into the new time capsule. But it will take a little bit of time to seal that. So we can put some of that stuff on display for two weeks or a month until we seal the new one. Okay, and if you wish, we could put it at the pool with yeah. the glass there and put it on display there. Perfect. Yeah. I'm having a bit of a panic attack right now. I just realized I'm older than the time capsule. Yeah. <coughs> I was there. I was there. What year was that? 67? 67. Oh, way before my time. <laughs> my wife, and this is a true story, my wife drug out her little uh, vest because she was part of the Dawson Creek Community Choir. Aww. And so she has this little tiny little vest that she's thinking she's going to wear. <laughs> no. On her no, arm. She not. <laughs> so we were all there. The 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 we day. were there for the opening. It was such a cool event. I'm looking forward to opening the time caps. The last thing that we'd like to do is in the report there's something called the frog and it's greatness um, magnified and so what happens is we're going to get Megan to come up and she is going to help us frog mayor and council so we're going to get you guys to come up front and uh, stand up. I don't and think so. <laughs> so what it is, it's about recognizing people for their greatness and so this is what we're going to do. We're going to come up and we're going to take pictures so we can get all council up so we can frog you. <laughs> Frogging's fun. <laughs> Now I know. Look why, he, now I know why. Like no, I, now I know why Trebekov's not here. <laughs> <laughs> he's afraid he's gonna get frogs. <laughs> or not frogs? Maybe he's afraid he didn't get frogs. Come on, get closer. Jordan puts his hands. Okay. So the frog is a recognition program that we started within the city of Dawson Creek. And what it stands for is forever recognizing others' greatness. So we would like to recognize Mayor and Council for your greatness. And so the greatness that we notice in you is your hard work, dedication, and commitment to our beautiful community of Dawson Creek. So from cool. all of us, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Questions for community services? Thank you. Thank you. Great job. 15 7, we have a Director of Development Services. Good morning. Good morning, whoop, whoop. Welcome. Whoop, whoop. Top that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Top the really frog. We don't have much left. 
You're uh, not frog, you know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll just touch on a few things. Um, OCP, Council awarded that, uh, that contract to Urban Systems at the last meeting. We've since met with them and kind of kicked the project off. You've probably seen some meeting invites that have come through. Um, Urban's going to come and do a couple of sessions with Council. Um, following the meeting on the 12th, I believe, and the one uh, after that, just to uh, kind of kickstart some things. So that's that's moving along. Uh, it's going to be quick and uh, crunch on the timeline, but we're targeting the end of the year to have that wrapped up. 10th Street Bridge, tenders closed a week ago Friday. Uh, we had five bids and one of them uh, did fall within our budget so that's good news uh, we were just completing the review at the end of last week so i'll be bringing a report to council on the 12th recommending award on that project so so that's good if if council um, awards that project that'll probably kick off right around the first of july for that uh, there was couple other quick notes. So we have a new staff member in the engineering department, Kevin Swales, uh, started with us a couple of weeks ago. He is a recent grad from UBC Okanagan in civil engineering, so we're pleased to have him along. And uh, he did leave it, or live in Dawson a few years back. He played hockey for the Rage and then uh, went away to school and has come back. So that was certainly Something that paid off for us is one of the reasons that he came back to Dawson Creek is because he knew it and he knew the people and uh, some of the people he billeted with actually became really close friends and he's staying with them now. So uh, that certainly helped us in attracting him to come work for us. So a um, couple other items quickly is a uh, paving contract. Um, we'll be extending the contract with Peter Brothers. For 2017, uh, last year's contract allowed a one-year extension. Uh, we chatted with Peter Brothers earlier in the year, and they've agreed to hold pricing from last year to this year. So we'll be working on that with them. And um, we're also working with BC Transit in the Village of Poose. Uh, the Village of Poose wanted to have transit out to um, their July 1st celebrations. So. Um, we're kind of assisting with that as well. So, any questions from the port? Uh, yeah. 15th Street, Kevin, is it? 15th Street Bridge. Uh, yeah, sorry, forgot about that. Uh, I was out on site uh, late last week. They're prepping. They should be ready for curbs as long as the contractor comes later this week. Paving, follow that. So we're, we're kind of two weeks away if everything goes well. Um, yeah, it looks good. So we're not far away from completing that. Really, it'll just hinge on those uh, paving and curb contractors to be able to come and actually do the work. Uh, SureSpan is is has everything prepped and ready to go, so we're in good shape. Yeah. And who's the who is that? SureSpan look after that contract for the paving and the curb. Yeah. So they are the general, and they'll have uh, the paving as their subcontractor. So yeah, it's all up to SureSpan to complete that. Okay. Yeah. Just I guess it was like us to put the um, pressure on them to make sure they yep. get that. Because that's such an important link for you the bet. get it open. So right now, yeah, it looks like where um, their contractor said that they were feeling by the 9th or 10th of June. They were hoping to have everything done. Okay, good. Open up. Councilor McFadden? Uh, the 10th Street Bridge, once they get shovels in the ground, that's a little longer than 15th to get that one done, eh? Yeah, so we have substantial completion on that project for October 15th. Yeah, okay. That's, um, it, it's going to be a little bit tight. The challenge we have is uh, the concrete girders for the bridge are, are uh, a little bit, need a little more lead time, but we're hoping that we can still hit that 15th of October. Challenge is we want to try and button up everything before we get uh, winter weather, right? Exactly. So paving plants, things like that typically shut down right around there. So it's just trying to fit everything in in our window of opportunity. We also have to work within a certain window with the creek, so any in-stream works have to be within uh, July and August, so. Thank you. Anything further for Kevin? Thanks, Kevin. Perfect, thank Appreciate you. it. And uh, that's it for our Committee of the Whole. I just neglected one thing under my mirrors that I just want to go back to very quickly, and I had a delegation, a group of folks come to see me about uh, homelessness in the community and uh, so they're putting together some surveys and 
different stuff and have brought it to me and it's been very interesting and uh, so uh, anyway, I just wanted to give council a, uh, they're an informal group of just some residents that are on the verge of homelessness and they're working away on it and uh, wanted to raise it with me and brought some petitions and stuff and I'll continue to work with them and then I'll bring it back to council at some point. Uh, anything further, administration, anything? We're good? So we're gonna recess to close. Marty, thank you so much.